Is the F450 a good work truck? I was thinking about this because I actually listed my F450 for sale with the market being so crazy. It's just an opportunity right now. I can sell this truck for more money than what I paid. And I got some inquiries. Someone called and wanted to pick up the truck, but I couldn't do anything because the truck was in the shop. It was getting a, getting a new frame. And he was asking, you know, obviously the truck's been in, a, been in an accident, took on some damage. He was asking what happened. I told him what happened. But what was interesting is even though the truck was in an accident and you can see it on the history and all that, it still held its value. It really didn't hurt it too much. Dealerships were calling me, offering me basically what I paid. And then private sale was coming in at more than what I paid. So very interesting situation with this truck being valued so high but the question is does this make a good work truck and it's interesting and the reason i'm thinking about this is because one of the guys called and said that his cfo of the company drives this and he pulls like an excavator around or whatever and there was an accident he got same kind of thing he got an accident but his vehicle was totaled and he needed his guy to have this truck because he didn't the guy was roughing it driving like an xl truck and he deserved to be back into a lariat f450 like he was before he got into an accident so as a work truck i mean you look at this thing and you think rv like you think oh let's go pull an rv across the country but i don't know it's not really the best truck for pulling an rv when you think about the available payload and how big some of these RVs have gotten, the if you think, oh yeah, I want the biggest RV, this truck might not actually pull the biggest RV right now. Honestly, the F-350 sync or F-350 Dually with the maximum payload can probably pull a bigger RV legally than the 450. Now, actual pulling confidence, the 450 is going to be better. It has a little bit better gear. Well, it has a, a better gear ratio, a little bit better than the 350 Dually. You can get the 450. Well, you have to get the 450 pickup truck and the 430 rear gear. And the 350, you can get like a 410. But the actual towing capacity is higher, I believe, on the 450. But it's the payload on the 450 that kind of suffers. It is a derated truck. When you look at the payload and the door sticker here, you will see that the payload number is only 4,800 pounds, so 4,835. If you really wanted to get the maximum payload on the 450, you'd have to probably get an XL, no moonroof, no features, none of that. All those features add up to eating into your payload. But a 350 has quite a bit more payload than a 450 because a 350, they're both set at 14,000 pounds max gross vehicle weight rating. And when you go to a 450, the heavier axles of a 450 and the rear and the front, you get a better front axle, you get a better rear axle, heavier duty. They can hold more weight. But the real weak link is your springs. You have the same springs as a 350, which gives you a good ride. But you don't have the same heavy duty springs that you get in a cab and chassis F450. Those, those springs you wouldn't want to daily drive. The spring pack in this 450, you could daily drive this all day. It'd be just fine. You have those heavy duty axles under you, but F350 dually rear springs. So very comfortable springs. Now, what's interesting about the 454 work truck, what really is attractive about the 450 as a work truck is number one, your pin weight. You got a three inch hitch and you have 24 Hundred pounds of tongue weight. Now, when you're working a truck, it's not hard to get overweight on your tongue. Even for me, I'm definitely hitting that 2,400 pound tongue weight just with the stuff that I'm doing, and I'm not doing nothing crazy. I'm not really hauling excavators and stuff like that. I haul sod and leaves and dirt and stuff like that, and I can reach that tongue weight no problem. So it's nice to have that instead of having your truck all squatted out. This truck, I haven't really squatted it, really. Honestly, it hasn't really been squatting. Another thing about the 450 that makes it a really good work truck is that limited slip rear end. When it comes to pure performance out there working in elements, <clears throat> a limited slip rear diff is great. I mean, it's way better than an electronic locking. This thing just hooks up in the snow and pushes. Put some salt in there, you're pushing in two-wheel drive. 
plowing and two-wheel drive and it's just a good good thing to have it's great for stability whenever the rear end kicks out under power it just the whole truck wants to straighten out so it's just a very 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 confident inspiring thing that put on the truck is a limited slip i really wish you could get that on the other trucks i do not believe from the factory you can get a limited slip on a single rear wheel but it really need it's really something that ford if they offer limit, more limited slip options, I think they'd sell a lot more trucks. If the electronic locking, where you pull the button, by the time you're spinning out, you don't have time to pull that button. Or by the time you're stuck, you don't have time to pull that button. This system reacts quicker than the pulling of the button. Uh, so yeah, eight foot bed, great, great to have an eight foot bed when you are putting stuff in your bed and running out of bed space. Now the dualies, they are bigger and cumbersome, but honestly, from my point of view, they stick out about as much as the mirrors, so not a big deal. I, I was nervous about going with the dually because of the wheels, but honestly, I, maybe they even stick out less than the mirror. I think the mirror sticks out farther than the dually. So no issues with me and the dually or hitting anything. I've never swiped anything with the dually. I have backed into a pile of snow that was light and fluffy just from being plowed but other than that i've never hit a dually or damaged a dually fender flare or anything so i've been lucky there uh the payload is good for what i do uh the 4800 pounds you can put the salt and everything in here i hang a flap down the rear of the truck it hasn't really been negatively affected too much by the salt the truck still looks clean underneath uh one another good thing though about the 450 and being a good work truck now this truck is a lariat ultimate but if i could go back in time i'd at least get an xlt but even an xl 450 is a good truck you can put so much weight on this front axle there is no plow that this truck can't carry it can carry the xl wide out plow from western or fisher it can carry all the plows for pickup trucks now when you go diesel a lot of times you run out of front axle capacity for your plow the, the diesel engine is heavy and it's a lot of weight over the front end normally a diesel truck has enough capacity to hold a v plow but once you get to the expandable wing plows like the ones we run the diesel don't have the front axle capacity now the 450 even though it's derated down to 14,000 pounds the front axle and the rear axle can can haul more weight uh, when you look here at the axle you can see that the front axle let's see here rear axle can hold 4,491 pounds where's the front let's see here front axle can hold 6,000 pounds so it's interesting this thing holds a plow no problem and basically what I do with the truck most of the time I just leave the plow on the truck most of the time unless I got to get on the freeway and go far then it makes sense to take it off but I'll leave it on the truck that way I'm just ready if something starts happening plows on the truck I leave salt in the truck too they say you got to take the spreader out and clean it and all that but I don't I got the I got the uh, salt dog uh, spreader everything in it is stainless steel i just leave the salt in there i know it's gonna probably mess something up down the road and potentially freeze up or whatever but i just leave the salt in the truck and the spreader and i check my properties daily and if something needs a little bit of salt it's already in the spreader i don't even have to think about it i freeze up a little bit once or twice whatever because you're not supposed to do it you're not supposed to leave salt in there but usually if i'm going to freeze my spreader it's not even because I left the salt in there. It's because, like, it was wet and it was cold. And that stuff froze instantly when I got it. Typically is what happens. So I'm still kind of working that out and learning how to do that. I think if it's going to be really wet and cold, I'm just going to freaking not. I don't know. I'm going to mix some calcium chloride in there or something. But the one to freeze up we had is because it was so wet and cold. The stuff froze before the night was even over. But that's the thing that i like about this truck it's always ready plow on the truck salt in the truck it's always ready to go and that really does make things a lot more efficient for me because uh it's always ready to go it's just i'm ready 
Now, are they worth it? I think right now, they're not too 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 much worth it. I got this truck at a good time. I got it before everything went crazy. Uh, it was still during COVID, but it was at a place where COVID was not quite as bad as it is. Dare I say now? It's not really COVID's not even a problem now, but all the government stuff is an issue. So right now the inflation is so high to get one of these trucks is so much money it's not worth it 80,000 for this this truck MSRP was 81,000 out the door I think I got it for about 78 I've been paying it down for two years for me to sell it and get all that money that I paid into it would be great I'm not opposed to it but I love the truck so much that it's kind of hard to do but um, it's something I'm thinking about, you know, maybe slowing down and just taking on fewer accounts and just chilling and taking the sale from this. But then again, I don't know. It's such a good truck. And I know if I were to let it go, I wouldn't be getting another one anytime soon. But yeah, are they worth it today? I don't know about, you know, it being at these prices. But the 450 package it really wasn't that much money itself at the time i don't know what they're going to be now in the future when the 2023s come out at the time of filming this we don't know if the what the 2023s are even going to look like so the 450 package itself is 100 percent worth it if you're buying it and just adding that package onto it it's probably going to be like six or seven thousand dollars but also it's a diesel engine standard which is a big expense something to think about a lot of guys don't want diesels there are more headache. There's more moving parts. There's way more money to maintain. But uh, they are fun as, fun as heck to drive. So are they worth it? It was worth it for me at the time. You know, I got it before everything went crazy. But anyway, my name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. Hope to see you in the next video. Over and out.